the ultimate GNU plus Linux distro recommendations. These are for those who are serious about software freedom. And also I've included init freedom along as well for the criteria for these recommendations, if they can be called that. First, we have Dev1. Dev1 is a GNU plus Linux distro based on Debian. It is basically a fork of Debian. It's mostly identical to Debian, except it doesn't use systemd. Instead, you have the option of installing sysv in it or openrc. That's basically the only difference when it comes to Debian, comparing it to Debian. Uh, it is not FSF approved because it allows the user to install proprietary software. But I am not the FSF and I'm not concerned necessarily for recommending something uh, or rather not recommending something because it allows the user to install proprietary software. I trust you figure out the way to only install free software on these distros, so I will be recommending it regardless of whether it allows you to install proprietary software or not. As long as it allows the user to install only free software, then it qualifies as an operating system that allows the user to install only free software. So it is good enough to qualify on my list. So dev1. It is really good. Static releases and all that. That's good stuff. The next on the recommendations we have the GUIX system. Now this is a GNU plus Linux distro that is actually made by the GNU people in some way. I'm actually not exactly sure what the affiliation is. But I believe that the GUIX system, the GUIX SD, or whatever it might have been called in the past, it is affiliated with the GNU project. So, in in a way, it is like the most GNU GNU plus Linux distro out there. It is basically a GNU plus Linux distro made by the GNU people to some extent. So yeah, that's interesting. If I remember correctly. GUIX has its own init system that was called GNU Shepherd or something like that. Uh, of course, GUIX is a fully free operating system and it is FSF approved. So, 100% free software, that is good. It is, it compiles packages from source, it's a source based distro in that it, if you install packages you need to compile them. So that's something to be aware of. It has a lot of interesting features, all kinds of very advanced features, really very advanced. You can do all kinds of these reproducible systems, that's, some, that's something to look into if that sounds interesting. GUIX is like it's really up, really advanced. Okay, well next we have Parabola. Parabola GNU Linux on <coughs> Parabola GNU Linux. It is it is also an FSF approved distro. It is a rolling release distro like ARCs. As a matter of fact, it is based on ARCs. So the ARCs distro it normally comes with some proprietary firmware in the kernel and of course it allows proprietary software to be installed so it's not of of course inst so it is not of course approved by the FSF but hyperbola no, I mean parabola parabola is a distro that gets rid of all the proprietary software both from the kernel and from the repositories it is a fully free distro recommended by the FSF so basically it's args just minus proprietary software I do not recall what the init system is, but uh, as, as, as far as I remember it offers multiple options. So, yeah.
that's that's a distro. And then now I have two more extra mentions. These are somewhat incomplete or otherwise interesting different recommendations. Incomplete as in they are not official 1.0 plus releases they are in like development phases still something like alpha software or beta software and the likes so i have two two of such recommendations plus the first of these two will shift to no longer being a gnu plus linux operating system in the future they will as a matter of fact become a bsd distro but for the time being they are a gnu plus linux distro and I'm of course talking about Hyperbola. Now Hyperbola is also based on ARCs, but it doesn't follow the rolling release model. It just takes some ARCs inspired ways of doing things, but it's not a rolling release. And it is fully free software. It is also FSF recommended, endorsed. Uh, Hyperbola is still developmental software in that it's not it's not yet 1.0 or higher in the release version the first should I say official release will be actually a BSD distro so it's no longer going to be a GNU plus Linux distro that's really interesting that might be something to look into from what I've seen Hyperbola is not necessarily a good recommendation for production work it seems to be more of a, from what I would say, something to tinker with for hobbyists and the likes. Where the previous three recommendations would have been more suitable for all kinds of different use cases. Hyperbola. From, from my testing, it lacks a lot of software in the repository. Now that may be because of user error on my part, but I'm not exactly sure. Hyperbola is a really strange operating system. It is just something that I'm, as for the time being, I'm just tinkering with it, so I'm not so sure how useful it will be for use cases other than just experimentation for the time being. Anyway, let's move on to the last bonus extra recommendation mention or whatever. So that will be Dragora. Now Dragora that is completely like an experimental thing and as far as I'm aware it has only like one maintainer or developer or whatever and it it is an independent project so it's not based on any other distro now that is very interesting it is developmental software and well what should i say about it it's it's, it's a really strange project it's not necessarily something to de developmental it's not necessarily something for develop it's not necessarily something for production use. It's still very much developmental software and Dragora is a really strange distro. It might be better to wait for there to be better releases. Well, I've mentioned all the five distros that I'm gonna recommend or mention or whatever. Out of these five, the first three are the more suitable, better recommendations that I would suggest you look into if you wanna use your computer for like work and stuff. Out of those, I would say Dev One is probably your best choice. Now, if you want an ARCs like rolling release system, then Parabola is basically that, but just FSF approved. And it also follows in its freedom, respects that or whatever. Guix, Guix is a very advanced system. If you're like really into like this whole computer hacking stuff, like if you're really into these computer things, then Guix is a 
distro to look into. Guix is a, it, it has these, all of these advanced features. It's a, it's a really advanced operating system. It, it's not necessarily something that any grandma can use. So that's like for the hackers. The Guix is the hacker operating system. The most hacker operating system out of all of these. I, I think, probably, yeah. So, for just regular computing use, for the most part, for general populations, Dev1 is probably the best recommendation out of these, because it's basically just Debian, and Debian can be basically used by anyone. Well, not necessarily anyone, anyone, because not everyone knows about computers. But then again, this is not this is not necessarily for the beginners. This recommendation. Yeah, I expect you have like some experience with GNU plus Linux distros by now. This is the ultimate GNU plus Linux operating system. It's like this is the absolute like purit puritan pur purist operating systems. Free software, philosophy respecting, FSF approved distros, except Dev one isn't. Oh yes, did I mention that Dragora is also FSF approved? I don't remember if I mentioned that. Anyway, Dev1 isn't FSF approved, but it, inst it, it allows you if it allows the user to install only free software. So that's good enough for me to recommend as a fully free operating system, at least by choice. So yeah, it, I understand why FSF cannot recommend o systems that allow the installation of proprietary software because if the FSF were to recommend the use of these distros that op allow proprietary software to be installed, it's basically leading the users to install proprietary software, perhaps even by mistake. So the FSF cannot recommend that. Because they would be recommending an operating system that leads people to use proprietary software. So they can't recommend that. But like I've already said, I trust you with the responsibility of installing the operating system in such a in su installing the operating systems in such a way as to not allow any proprietary software to go in there. So, yeah, those are the ultimate GNU plus Linux operating systems. It doesn't get any it doesn't get any freer than this basically. It is this is this is like as free as it gets basically. No firmware, no no system D, no proprietary software. It's just free software and freedom respecting software. So that's a rad list. Yeah, that's something to look at. So a quick uh, conclusion or summary at the end. Dev one basically like that's a general purpose workstation type most people can use that GUIX for the hackers Parabola for those who want rolling releases the latest software for whatever purpose Hyperbola is something to experiment with and Dragora you probably have to wait until it's developed further it's more of a bonus mention like the Hyperbola I guess also but Hyperbola is at least somewhat usable for some use cases but it's a it's somewhat limited for some use cases. It's more something to tinker with at this time. So yeah, that's that. That's that's the ultimate GNU plus Linux distros recommendations. That's for those who want software freedom and want to take it as far as it can go, basically. <coughs> now, there might be ways to get even more software freedom. Other distros, who knows? But these are the recommendations that I will make, plus the few bonuses, some weird Dragora distro, that's really weird, and Hyperbola is just something to think care with. Yeah, well, that's software freedom for you. That's it for the speech. Thanks for listening. Goodbye now.